All right, shall we call the meeting to order? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, aye. And um, so it's 11 a.m. In attendance, we have Ann Cuneo, our chair, is absent today. She had a previous doctor's appointment. To my right is Bill Francis. He's been with us as a registrar for 25 plus years, and he knows the ins and outs of being a registrar. Conley has been a registrar for, this is your, going to your second year, Conley? This is Conley Ford. Okay. I served as your town board for the Republicans for many years. Eight years. Yeah. I took over for Bobby Mafuji. Yeah. Former <laughs> town clerk. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're my fourth, fourth town clerk. Oh, my goodness gracious. Hopefully, we'll retire together soon someday, right? Oh, God. Uh, we'll see, right? Yeah. Um, so, and a motion to accept the agenda? I'll make a motion to accept the agenda. I second. Okay, all those in favor? Yes. Second. Yeah. Agenda accepted. Unanimous. Okay, and then, um, so we are here to discuss <coughs> the petitions have been signed, properly filed, on time certified everything um, on May 28th all right that was the deadline they came in well before the deadline at 338 ish this yeah 338 um, all the signatures have been certified and signed off by all the wardens we only require three out of the four wardens I mean excuse me uh, registrars to sign off on them so they're all signed and certified um, I just have to make lines on these so they're not replicated. So, Gordon, these are copies for you. Thank you. And we use red pen a lot in our office so we can tell the difference between original and wet and a copy of ink. Okay, so those are for you. Thank you. All right. So we're here to discuss um, the date of the recount and what's going to happen at a recount. Um, for the debt exclusion override question of the May 18th, 2019 annual town election. Um, I have discussed the dates with now town council is out on vacation this week. Next week I'm at a conference for three days down the Cape with Heather. Heather's coming on Wednesday. I'll be gone Monday through Friday, so next week isn't doable. So we decided on the week after, which puts us at the 18th, 19th, and 20th. Based on the availability of town council and Rich Bowen, who has kindly offered his services, um, Laurie West, our town, cl the tell town clerk, um, I reached out to her because she's done rec a recount before, and I have not. Um, I have reached out to Laurie. Laurie gave me the name of Lauren Goldberg, who is with Copeland and Page, who actually does recounts. She's $3,000. So when Rich heard, um, Rich Bowen heard that there was going to be a recount, he notified me. And I said, do you know anything about Lauren? Blah, blah, blah. He goes, I've been town council for many years, and I have experience with 50-plus recounts, so I'd be happy to do it for free. So I spoke to Cindy Amara, town council. And she said that go with Rich, that's fine, no problem. And she will be there. So based on their availability, um, if you guys are available on June 20th at noon, this gives people a chance to eat lunch before they come. And uh, the workers, I still have to get the workers. But um, if Thursday, June 20th works for you guys, it works for town council and Mr. Bone. Does that work it's for you, it Thursday? Works for me, yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So here's, um, so should we make a motion to hold the recount on Thursday, June 30th? I mean, excuse me, June 20th? Yeah. At noon? Yeah, I, I move that we have. Mm -hmm. I'll second that. On June 20th, okay. June 30th at 12 noon. All right, all those in favor? Aye. Okay, so the date of the recount, again, is Thursday, June 20th at noontime. This will be held because we're comfortable there. I know the tables are all in the closet there. They're handy to the gym. Uh, Situate High School gym, okay, same as the polling location. And um, I've already contacted the school. They have that date, and they had a couple other dates available. The reason that's best, too, for these dates is school's closed on the 18th. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to worry about parking. So um, the 
there will be, and you will all, you'll be notified. Who should I notify in favor of the question? Who ran the, should I notify you? Please. Okay, Jennifer, as the petitioner, I will notify you in writing. I have six days, according to, do you have the recount information on how to do a recount? Yes. Okay. I have to notify you six days ahead of it in writing, per certified mail, and I believe email as well. Are you comfortable with that? Do you want me to hand deliver one too? No? Okay. Um, I will send it certified mail and email notifying you of um, when, where, how, and why. So if you look um, at some point review, we set the date. Um, oh, what does it say? It says uh, it? the registrars must uh, set the account at least three days. Oh, three days written notice, which I won't do three days. I'm like too organized <laughs> to go way ahead. Uh, to each <coughs> candidate for office or the petitioner. Um, in case of a ballot question, the person designated and the appropriate committee organized on the other side. Um, for a recount of any officer question appearing, oh, that's a state ballot, that's irrevocable. Uh, so the notice must include the date and time of the recount and the number of agents. So you are allowed to bring as many people as I have working there, tallying, and I have there'll be 12 talliers, two for each precinct, okay? Kind of set up like when you check into an election, there'll be six tables, um, a reader and a counter, correct, Bill? Right. Okay. And then I have a runner, and I have a final tally clerk. So the precincts, the ballots will, let me start at the beginning. So I'll tell you a time that you're allowed to come mm -hmm. if you want. The police um, will escort the ballots over to the recount area about an hour before. I'll be over there too, going over everything with the workers, okay? You can come here that hour earlier and watch them being taken out of the vault if you want to. Doesn't matter to us. And by the way, Bill and I and Conley have signed this. They're all secured, okay? They always are, anyhow. But um, they, are, they get secured the night of they go over to the polls election day with the police escort and DPW, and they come back the same way, and they're immediately locked in the vault in the basement, not in the archives vault, but there's a special vault. Um, nobody can go in, in that vault for 30 days after an election unless they're escorted by one of us. They are, they're in banker's boxes labeled with a security label, and they're also in a blue security box with zip ties for, each, for just the voted ballots and by precinct. Okay, and then we have all the other materials we're supposed to bring. If you've reviewed this, are um, I called elections today? I said, do we really have to bring the like eight or nine boxes I have of unvoted ballots back to the polls? And they said yes. And those, some of them were never even you know opened other than to pull test ballots. So yes, all that goes. Absentee ballot applications and their envelopes are already in order anyhow. Alpha by. Um, in precinct Alpha by street, and so are their envelopes. That's how we package them up anyhow for things like this. You always plan an election like you're going to have a recount when you pack it all up and finish it. Um, we have, um, oh, spoiled ballots. So in front of me are the clerk's books. The clerks are the record keepers of all elections, okay? And in here are the number of ballots brought to the polls, all right? The number of spoiled ballots they got during the day. A spoiled ballot is a voter has three ballot options, you know, three chances to vote a ballot. So if you go in the voting booth with your first ballot and you go, oh, I made a mistake, you call a warden and they come over and they walk you to the clerk's table and they put it in an envelope and then they put it in another envelope. They don't take the person's name, they just remember the person and they walk them back to check out another ballot. And then if they mess up that one, then they get a third chance, but that's it, three strikes and you're out. So they have a record of all those spoiled ballots. They weren't a lot for this election. I don't know, it's in here. I, you know, I look, I don't even, they sign off on this. The hourly counts, how many people voted per hour based on the machines, all that stuff. Um, it also tells us in here how many absentees were voted. So um, absentee ballots can't be voted unless the, you know, the application has been signed by the three registrars and what have you. So those are all set. Those are all in a sealed box labeled, you know, whatever it is, absentee ballots and applications or envelopes and applications. And um, 
uh, the spoiled ballot box. I'm trying to think what else is down there. Um, oh, the check-in and check-out books after you, we got your notice of petition. We had already dissembled our check-in and check-out books. Check books. The check-in and check-out books, we only scan the check-in after an election. Um, you only have to scan one or the other. So I don't know if you notice when you check in, there's a scan code next to your name in the check-in book. So the following day, we scan in your voter participation. So if there's an X next to your name, we scan, scan, scan. Are they perfect? Never. Mm -mm. So if we have six precincts and say, just for a number, say 500 voted at precinct one, you have to wait a while, but you can go back into that, that thing that you scanned in the state, on the state computer, the elections computer, and you can see that you had, you scanned in 495. Oh, we missed five people. If we're under 10, we don't go back through the book again. You know, unfortunately it is what it is, but you know, we go to these conferences and learn these things from elections. You don't have to fret because you didn't scan in five people in that precinct, you know. In a perfect world, we hopefully would get everybody, but it doesn't always happen. We were pretty close this time, Heather, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 So um, going back to the, oh, so you are allowed, I believe before the recount starts to get there, um, nobody, I'll go over the observers too, nobody is allowed to touch ballots except for us and the election workers, the recount workers, okay? That's, that's election law. Um, you can review, you let me know what you want to review. If you want me to tear open the absentee ballot applications, I'd be happy to do so. Um, the, like I said, all that's in here. We have a Democratic clerk and a Republican clerk. So all of their stuff is all written in here. You can review that the day of the recount. Okay, I'll bring these with me. Um, these I keep in my office because I'm always setting up future elections, like next year is going to be a killer. There's four. Um, so we have 13, 12 talliers total, one to read, one to tally, okay, two at each table. So there's 12 people you can bring, plus a runner is 13. So you can bring up to 13 people. I have six more tables by precinct for counters. So uh, Bill, please jump in if, if I'm wrong, but um, going over how we're supposed to set this up. We have six more tables and they'll all be marked with a big number, one through six, for the precincts. There's a counter. So the, oh, so the police come over with the ballots. The ballots go locked up on this table or next to it, I forget which, at each precinct, all labeled. The bins are all labeled. When it's time, they get unlocked. They've got a zip tie on them. They get unlocked. Mm -hmm. And then each table of counters will count out blocks. And of course, this is how green I am at this. I'm like, uh, what's a block? They said it's 25, uh, excuse me, 50 ballots. 50. We tally in groups of 25 and we tally write-ins at the end of the night, so I always say 25, but it's 50. So each counter will count out uh, at each table for their precinct, the first block, which is in an, an envelope that says, for example, precinct one, block one. And they will count out 50 ballots carefully, put them in the envelope. There's a tally sheet that says um, precinct one, block one. And the runner will take it to precinct one, the tally, we call them tally teams, okay? And they will take the ballots out, and one will read, hum, you know, ballot um, one is yes, no, or blank. And they'll go through the whole envelope. When it's done, so their spreadsheet, did I bring one? So their spreadsheet looks like this. So this is just for that one block of envelopes. So each envelope, like I said, will have one of these, and it should match. Precinct one, block one. So the next one for precinct one will be block two, and so on. So I think the most voted in a precinct, 685. So that means 14 envelopes. So the last block will be less than 50 ballots, okay? Whatever it is, we'll figure it out when, they count, when the clerks, the counter clerks will count it. So they will go down. So the, the first ballot is the first column. And I'm going to give them either rulers or colored paper. Uh, so when they look at this, the person sitting across from them will say, okay, the first ballot is a no. And they'll mark a no, okay, and they'll put the ballot face down, and then they'll go to block two, okay, and so on, and so, or ballot two, rather, and so on, and so on, and so on, okay, all the way until 50. And hopefully my formulas didn't miss any. Um, 
once they're finished they'll put the envelopes back in that envelope and put it in a box hopefully on the floor because it's you know not a lot of space and then they return this to the runner the runner brings it to a final tally clerk of course I don't know who these people are yet. they're all imaginary um, I have a list of people that I'm gonna call who are really good at what they do um, so the final tally clerk will take the numbers from this block there's one of these sheets for each precinct this is precinct one she'll take her first block and write down how many yeses based on the total column and how many no's on this one okay precinct there's six of these for each precinct okay any questions so far okay I have a ton of them but um, at the end when all is said and done I think I'll have the registrar sign off on these okay um, and then at the end what I can do is instead of posting six of these on the website or I can if you want I can transpose the totals onto this final one just for posting purposes because we already have these ones which I can you know make copies and send them to you if you request them that's fine or you can examine them that's fine all right now in the meantime while the talliers you know your observers are going to be there and they're going to stand however you want them I think one can be behind the reader or one could be behind the tallier or they can have two, two on each one one on each one one on each one right does that right. sound right? right okay so then if you see that say Jane Smith was reading it and she told the tallier um, that's a blank and you're like oh I see a mark on that ballot I protest is what you want to say okay again we're only reading there's gonna be all these other things ahead of the ballot and on the bottom we're reading that question so if you think there's a mark or they said this is a no and it's supposed to be a yeah if you think anything's wrong with it you say I protest and um, the clerk the tally or, or the reader they just stop what they're doing and they give the ballot they don't tally anything and they give the ballot to the runner the runner brings it to us and we will determine by a vote what that vote is it's a blank it's a yes or no right yep. okay so I'm learning as I go blank. so you have three options to tally you have yes no blank so here's what here's the question all right let's go back to why this all began so when I send the ballot to the printer to my programmer let's go to the park goes to printer after I send up this mock-up it looks like a ballot but it's really not it has no place to vote on it it's just a list basically but it has the title the header annual town election May 18th oh, in my signature um, first race in order and that's uh, is it mass general law the order of the ballot is mass general law questions come after candidates that's the way it is that's the way it's unless the law changes that's it when I sent it to them my mock-up had the same font size on everything for the headers okay um, when I got the proof back I didn't even notice that it was smaller for the words question debt exclusion I was so concerned about making sure that the language was what the selectmen had voted on because we had one for the town meeting even though it's a different folder and one for the town election do different languages so I'm like you know really nervous about questions obviously so anyhow um, ballots are printed and then somebody came in and said this is really small and I said yeah I mean I know it's on there so I never even thought about it um, but anyhow unfortunately it went to the ballot like that there was nothing we could do it goes to the election elections have seen this ballot and they see nothing wrong with it the other option was probably to have it on the other side I think that's why they made the header one font size smaller so that no could fit up those check mark not check marks what are they called dashes they're thick black that's actually the border of the ballot now we tested the ballots on what day was it they're on that's the other thing I have is I have test ballots and I have the, the machine totals boxed up and if you want to look at those at the recount May 3rd I think I think we tested on May 3rd it was a Friday and everything went through fine now we tested 54 ballots by law we have to test 50 <coughs> um, we put in 54 and if you look at the test tapes you'll see that the totals don't add up to 54 that's because we test blanks we test misvoted ballots so if I 
I, well, I, I do the test bout, so I mark them all. So I do every race, every person, I do all the write-ins, and I do all the blanks, all right? I do a blank ballot. Um, and then I do overvotes. So I vote for two selectmen when you're only supposed to vote for one, or I undervote and only vote for one library trustee instead of two. If you overvote a ballot with these DS200 election machines, it will not accept it. You have, the voter has three choices. One, go back instead of making a check in your little oval, because we're not allowed to look, but the machine tells the voter the alarms go off, because this happened to a friend of mine. The alarms go off, and he goes, oh my god, what did I do? And I said, it says you, it can't read the miss marks or something. He goes, what does that mean? I said, well, this is why our parents tell us to color in, in the lines. I said, did you see at the top of your ballot tells you how to vote the ovals, how to, how to map, mark them? He goes, oh, I did check marks, and I went, so I said, here's what you can do. You can spoil the ballot and start over. You can go back in the booth, because you haven't checked out yet, really. Um, just remark it and check out again, make sure they have it checked off. OK. Or we can put it in the auxiliary bin and hand count it at the end of the night. The auxiliary bin takes a warden's key to open it. It's a little bin. It's separate if you looked at the machine bins that they sit on. A perfectly voted ballot goes into the chute, takes it, blah, 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 and it goes down in this big bin. Okay. There's a little drawer. It's actually smaller than our other machines. And there's a key. And if you can't be bothered, you're in a hurry, and you don't want to go revote or fix your ballot, you can put it in the auxiliary bin with the warden. And we will hand count it at the end of the night, which is we had 20, 24 total auxiliary ballots for the whole election, which isn't really a lot, which was good. Um, but it won't let you overvote your ballot. Like if you made a mistake on the question, you voted against it when you really wanted it, and you're, you put that ballot in, there's two votes, it won't accept it. It'll say you overvoted it, and of course, if you have the option, you're going to ask for a brand new ballot. You know, we can't give you another ballot to just put, it's, it's not going to even let you bypass it and throw it in anyhow. That's what I'm saying, okay? And ballots, as I explained to Jennifer, ballots can go in this way, this way, this way or this way. There's four ways about, can't go in horizontally, okay? It's only calibrated for the long way, but. Um, so just to be clear on that, the testing went fine. We had no problems with the machines at all. Um, and we, we try to do that as soon as possible so that if there are problems, we can get the tech out to, you know, whatever, whatever issue there is. Um, also, the company that I send the ballot to actually sold us these machines. They do the formatting. I don't use them for printing ballots because they're a little bit more expensive than the company I use. So um, they send me test ballots as well. And you'll see those. I threw those in the box separate from my test ballots. But they send out a printout and, um, of their thumb drives because they, they program the thumb drives that go in each precinct's machine. So any questions on anything right now to date? Yes. Since the four registers, the two two, is that a blank? Uh, you know what? I did read that somewhere. I think it is. Um, I think it's a blank. I think it's a blank. I think yeah. I read that it was a blank. Right. But I'll look. I'll look into that for a two two mm -hmm. vote. Okay. Just for clarification. Yeah, that's so a no, that's a good question. Two two vote uh, challenge ballots. Is what I think it's a blank. I think it is too. Yeah, if it can't be determined, it's a blank. It's like. It's like when somebody, when we're telling at the end of the night, if it's Mickey Mouse, we don't have to write the words Mickey Mouse. It goes to a blank because he's fictitious. If they write in Gordon Price, all right, I, we, they have to, or if Gordon Price is written in, we have to tally Gordon Price. Does it go anywhere? No, unless Gordon gets 10 or more votes. Nobody ever sees that Gordon's name was written down. If he gets 10 or more votes for state elections, I have to report it to the Secretary of State's office. Um, otherwise, it just stays, it doesn't do anything. It's just part of my official results in lowercase would be Gordon Price and his 10 votes by precinct, okay? So um, legitimate names have to be read as that name and tallied as that name, but fictitious names could be read as blanks. So when we're tallying, and if we can't determine on auxiliary ballots, we tally the whole ballot, obviously. On the other, the whole other bin of main, the main bin of all those other ballots, we go through every single ballot looking for ink. So in other words, if um, 
they wrote in a write-in, but they didn't circle in the oval next to write-in. The machine read, read it as a blank. But we go by what's called in election law the intent of the voter. So when we empty out that bin at the end of the, end of the night, first we tally the, oh, the tallyers, tally the auxiliary ballots, because we know they all have to be done, put them back in the envelope, set them aside. Now we're opening the big box of ballots. We go through them first to see if there's any, anything written. You don't have to read it. You just have to look for wet ink. That's all you're looking for, not even the oval. Put those aside. Put all the ones that don't have write-ins back in the box. Count them and put them back in the box. Perf in a perfect world, we should actually, when we count them, put them back in packs of 50, but they, they don't fit in the box well because you cross-pile them. So now we're going to do, so we just put them back after we count them, except for the ones that have um, the write-ins. We separate those into packs of 25 because that's how big our tally sheets fit, um, how many ballots it fits across. So we do... Um, the tally sheets, so we, they do. They just hand write in everybody's name and give it a check or a blank and, you know, off they go. Um, but at that point, you're only doing that race's writing. You're not doing the whole ballot like you would the ballots that couldn't be read in the machine. So that's that process. Um, How long do you think the process would take? Well, you know what? I, somebody said three to four hours. I don't think it's going to take that long. It's only one question. There's no write-ins, so we don't have to tally any write-ins. It's yes, no, or it's a blank. You know, and I think it, the tapes, the machine tapes are pretty straightforward. Um, I have the official results. So if you notice the unofficial results that I posted and then the official results, you'll see a difference of 24 ballots, and that's the auxiliary ballots that we had to hand count. That's why I only post an unofficial first, all right? It leaves room for data entry errors. It leaves room for um, the auxiliary ballots, okay? And speaking of data entry errors, when I posted the official, I have a spreadsheet that's three pages. It's where I record write-ins, which are not public, that go to all others on the second page because they don't qualify unless they have 10 or more. And then the last page is um, the final. So my unofficial is the middle page, so I posted that. So my final, I'm going through, I said, okay, none of the all others are really write-ins. They don't qualify to be on the official. So I'm like proofing everything. I'm going, okay, we're good to go for the official. Yeah, we're good. All the totals look great. Put it up there. And poor Stephen Pritchard's totals didn't carry over on my final. I was embarrassed. so. I put a little disclosure and I went, yeah, my bad, so. But, you know, if you look at the original, the, from the, oh, the, yeah, the unofficial, and then you see the one I posted with the corrections, you can tell the 24 ballot difference, it's fine. But it's embarrassing when you do that, so. Um, when are the absentee ballots voted on? Are they put through the machine? Oh, yeah, yeah, so a lot of that people. Day? Oh, yeah, they have to be. They have to be put, um, well, let me put it, they have to be put before the polls close. Now, if a voter is in line at the polls right at closing, they get to vote. Same with absentee ballots. So if we haven't put them all in by the time the polls close, we have to put them in. That's why we have extra workers on hand to do that, because we don't want to be there any later than we have to. You know, we want to shut it down and get those totals up. You might, at the time we're voting the absentee ballots, the warden from either party is there witnessing those those going in. Mm -hmm. And if there's any reason that ballot is, is bounced back, any reason we put it in the... Uh, the auxiliary to be the auxiliary counted. Yeah. We act on behalf of the voter. Mm -hmm. um, and we have, they does, usually the wardens designate one of their workers to do it, or the deputy warden, or we even want, my staff is eligible to do it as well, with the permission of the wardens. Um, yeah, they all have to be voted that day. I had a comment one time, and I just, it was during the presidential, and I just, oh my gosh, you're kidding me, right? So somebody said, well, so you don't vote, the <laughs> they were voting absentee, and they said, as they're handing in their ballot, so these don't get counted unless it's really close, right? <laughs> and I'm like, no, they get counted, because what are we going to do? Clear out the machines and go, jeez, you know? So no, all absentees go through the machines before, hopefully, before the close of, of elections. So state elections, it's 8 o'clock. Town elections are based on the vote of the selectmen at my recommendation. So. But they were, they were done early. I think you guys weren't there. I think we got them done. Heather, do you remember when we got them done? We got them done early. I think they were done by 3. 
because we don't like to hang around. I mean, because they have to process them too. After they're voted, you have to account for all the envelopes. The envelopes go to the um, the clerks to record how many went through, because um, you can't have a ballot without an envelope. That's the law. So, yes. Um. I imagine, well, the directions recommend that we keep our own tallies. You can do that, yes. Yeah. Now, yes, thank you, yep. If there is a difference. Mm -hmm. um, you can't recount, I heard. Do I, I, right. Well, what I'm thinking of is you have the, the spreadsheet, the block. Yep. And what if the person who's marking up the spreadsheet. What do you mean? Marks it wrong. Should, in other words, if we're limited in personnel, do, do we need to watch both the ballot to see if we're going to protest the call? Right. As well as the tallier. the tallier. Yeah, that's what I mean. So, you There's know. Two different people on right. the opposite side. Right, that's table. why I was saying you can have up to 13, you can watch right. the runner, and two people at each precinct, right. which is 12. But if the person who's making the read right. calls it, no. no. And the person on the other side Marks checks a yes. A yes. Then There's we have no a problem. Check on that. Well, we have a problem with people paying attention. Yes. Absolutely. So I mean, I don't. So we have really good workers. I understand and that, but people make mistakes. Yeah, they do. They do. Well, that's the whole part of having observ observers. I mean. There's nobody. Like we there's need an observer on both sides. Oh yeah, you that's. Oh, that oh, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You have an observer for the. The yes. caller and, yes. and the tallier. And, the tallier. Mm -hmm. and we should keep our own count too. You can, yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's up to yourself. That's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if that occurred, would we then say I protest? Yes, okay. that's when you say I protest, and right. they st and they stop. And if they don't stop, you tell them you have to stop until we talk to the yeah. get the runner over here, and you know, you know, none of my workers that I ever have had. And since I've been here, we've never done a recount except for Bill. I did one recount. Did you? They, they will be. They will be. So Connie knows. And and, um, <laughs> of course, which, we had it in the cafeteria. Right. In school. <laughs> the which Bowen recount. will be there, and he that knows. Was Ten, yeah. twelve years ago, probably but it's fifteen easy years ago. To just check the wrong. Board. It is, but I mean, this is serious, so I don't easily anticipate. Done. It easily is done. easily yeah. done. I it is. That happens more than. Yeah. You get in a rhythm. Yeah. You know what I was thinking, but I don't even know if it's allowed. I wonder if you could, although it would be more work. I wonder if you could take your block of 50 as the tallier and just open, you know, get out your ballots and go, put all the yeses in one pile and no in the other, and then the questionable ones last. Yeah. And then double check as you're going along. I don't know if that's if, allowed. If I were keeping a tally, I would want to make sure I, that right, my they have to take them as they come. Sheet. Yeah. Okay. Right. Huh? I would want to make sure my sheet matched your sheet at the end of the block. Oh yeah, that's why I want to bring this at the end. I yeah. want to go, hmm, you know, yeah. I don't, I know, I'm with you, I agree. I want it all to be what the machine said it was. That's my goal. And, um, and my, the workers that will train, I might have to call them in. For yeah, can we have a copy of what the machine said? Yeah, and it's posted on the website, the official. Okay. Per block, per precinct, per yeah. block? Yeah. So, Except this one, block, the un it's no, it's per precinct. Yeah. Well, because we don't have blocks yet. Yeah. You know, um, we have the tally. Our tally blocks are now put back in piles like this. You know, we have the tally sheets, but yeah. they're 25. All right, um, for storage purposes. But this is online as the official, and right. if you see the unofficial, you see the 24 ballot difference. So if we do the tally at, at precinct six, yeah, our total should match that. Yes. Okay. It should be, we're not reading moderator yeah. But if we had to have a discrepancy, then we'd have to go and look at block by block, right? Um, yeah, so for example, even counting out, something simple is counting out 50 ballots, okay? Yeah. If it's humid that day, they might stick. So by the time they get to their 50th ballot and then they got an extra one or they're okay. one short, yeah. then we're like, okay, let's <laughs> recount what you voted right there. You know, we can't have them turn in a tally sheet, if I'm not mistaken, and have it be one short of, of a block for the first, I mean, the last one's going to be short because we don't have exactly in groups of 50 for the last block to be counted because it's a different number, it's not a 50s number. 
Um, but I'm thinking that the counters have to make sure that they have 50 ballots before they send them over to the tally tables, right? right. And if it's humid out, they're gonna have to check twice. I would say check twice. And then the talliers are gonna have to be sure as they're, the reader actually, because they're the one that's gonna be looking at the ballot first, over here, and I'm the tallier, is gonna have to make sure it's one ballot, okay? So, oh, there's room for error. Of course there is, we're only human, you that's know? Right. And we all have to just take it down, because we're all like, I'm, I like every, all my ducks in a row, and I'm a nervous Nelly because I want everything to go smooth. And I can honestly say that the workers that we have are the same way. Um, and because they know, they don't want to deal with this. They don't want to go. Sorry, Kath, um, you know, we're really strict with election procedures. So, right. and same and with RECO. Is the reader always the reader throughout the process? Yes, I'm yes. Of these ballots. You want to you know, that's. <laughs> I'm going to write that down. Can yeah, you can't get you can't get eye fatigue. Reader and yeah. tally, especially some people's side is not as good as others. Can they switch positions? And it's quick, work it quickly. So work yeah, yeah, it. I, I don't think it's they can. It's never happened. Yeah, but, uh, I don't know if they can. I I've got that question though. These okay. are my questions to the state. I don't see why they shouldn't be able to. Because their positions. But they can just change seats. Yeah. Uh, We've that would we've never done it. Yeah. Just I don't, one, yeah. yeah. Are they going to be checking it against your official numbers at that point, or do they do that after? Do they come up with their own tally and then they check it with your results? Do you check against final tally? I would. I would like to do this. Right. That like that because yeah. I want to know. I don't want to go back to my office and go, oh no. So I'm assuming that yes, you would think that. This is a whole new recount. Yes, this is We're it. Not looking at the numbers. No, no, no. Exactly. Yeah, but okay. it'd be nice to make sure that we're close. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Afterwards. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, if if everybody's good with that, I'm just you know, I'm bringing this because I want to see. I want to make sure that everything's. Matt, I mean, I don't want anything to have happened to my machines to cause any issue. Because going forward to a presidential mm -hmm. election year, it would be detrimental to me and my staff and to the whole voter thing mm -hmm. if something were wrong with those machines. So I have every confidence in the machines. I, I really, I truly do. Um, Did you have any complaints about people feeding the ballots into the machines? No, no. not at all. Only if they over, oh, uh, only if they mismark their ballot. That's all. If they didn't color it in, that was it. And it was. Yeah. And those were the 24? No, the 24, no. Well, other than the 24, the auxiliaries are auxiliaries, and okay. for whatever reason, they, and I don't know what reason that they couldn't go through the machine. Um, sometimes if the voter has something sticky on their hands when they're voting, mm -hmm. um, it'll cause the machine to not send it through the chute and reject it back. But again, they have the option to um, do those three things I mentioned, either mm -hmm get a new ballot, spoil the first one, um, remark their ballot if they haven't overvoted it, mm -hmm. okay? Oh, and that's the other thing. If they fill in all those circles perfectly and they put their ballot through and they overvoted, the machine will tell you, you overvoted in a race. Um, so we encourage, I say we, the election wardens encourage you, go review your ballot and let us know if you need to spoil it. We can't look at it and let us spit back out. Right. So they have that option. Or they have the option to cast the overvoted ballot and it'll count as a blank. Okay. It negates it. So, but that's their choice. It's mm -hmm. not something we can do, you know. Um, so a 2 2 vote challenge, and then do we check it against the final tally? Okay. What's nice is that we do have an audit trail with the paper ballot. These these towns in have strictly electronic voting. They don't have that paper backup. That's so right. we've actually got the physical evidence right mm -hmm. here. So what we come up with is will meet the intent of the uh, voter. Right. Mm -hmm. That the it, intent of the voter. Absolutely, Connie. Mm -hmm. It's the intent of the voter how we hand count mm -hmm. these ballots. You know, mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of ballots in the past. Um, People don't under didn't understand, you know, how to vote it or how to write or do a write-in or, 
you know, they do chicken scratch right in, and you know, it, we do we go by the when we're hand tallying, it's obviously you know the most obvious intent of the voter, mm -hmm. you know, what they wanted to do. So, mm -hmm. um, so the questions I'm gonna go check out on are: Can the reader and the tally switch positions during the proceedings? And what do we do as a two-two vote challenge? And do we check it against the final tally? Right? Any other things I should be checking for? Oh, I know what I want to ask you guys. Um, oh, no, I think I already mentioned it. The, um, if you want to come down to the basement the day of when the police are here um, taking my stuff over, I only have, there are a lot of, well, there are a lot of boxes with unvoted ballots that weren't even used, but um, I have six blue security bins that the voted ballots are in, and then I have the spoiled ballots and another, I, I, might, I might have three more boxes of stuff, you know, record stuff. And then the others are like eight or nine boxes of unvoted ballots. So if you choose, you can be here, let's see, it's at noon. Be here around 5 of 11. Also, in your, le I'll just will say in your letter that I'm gonna send you, but also I need the names of any people who are observing because I want name tags on them, okay? If they're standing behind the tallyers and, and they're within the rope area, you've got 13 people, okay? You can have legal representation as well. Um, also, anybody from the public can sit in the unroped off area, and I don't even know how many seats I'll have custodians put out, but I'll have them put out at least 50 in that area. And plus the, um, us, the counters, yeah. The only other thing I'm thinking is I don't think the observers can sit and observe at the, they have to stand, right? They have to stand, just so you know. So you might want to switch out, excuse me. <coughs> um, you call them observers, uh, do, don't the directions call them agents just so that we're consistent? I don't know. Well, well what happens is the observers cannot interrupt the duties of the person doing the County. You can't carry a conversation or talk about right. family and all that other stuff because there's going to be some slow periods there between county. So it's not really a gossip session. So you need to caution whoever to observe. It's just only time there's an issue is they can actually speak to the person. Well, right yeah. now, now, according to what I read, yes. the only thing yeah. the agent can do is say, I protest. Correct. Now, mm -hmm. that would be in relationship to a reading on a ballot. Right. Now, what if they want to protest the walk tally or the way it was recorded by the tallyer? What should they say then? I protest. Same thing? Yep. Protest. Okay. But before we get to that, there should be no mark on a tally sheet. You should be protesting before. Th that, that's kind of a tight window, too. It is. Yeah. That's, that's really, it's, yeah, I've. I don't, I don't know want to step on your toes. So they, you know, they have two options to record it. I'm going to suggest pencil. They can record in red ink. They can tally or pencil. Yeah. I'm told. I thought so, the directions say red ink only. No, I heard. I saw red ink and pencil. Okay. Let's get that clear too, because that way, if you have a protested ballot, But well, they shouldn't be anything at the table. Just read the person recording. I am recording with a pencil that can actually make a mark on that ballot. Mm -hmm. It should right. be should be mm -hmm. it should be should not have something to to mark a ballot. Right, right. right. So it should be red or pencil. Well, no. So it should no, be no, red. No, use red or pencil. My my question is, if we're going to have people tallying on pads of paper, do you want us to use a different color ink? They're tallying on this. Uh, the agents. Oh, you? Yes. Um, if we're tallying on paper. I don't, I just know what we have to do. I understand. Yeah. Now that's going to be on red ink, I believe. Yes, and I thought it said or pencil. I think it's just a yeah, no, I think red it, 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 it's red. Oh, we use red, oh ink. red ink or we red, use red pencil. Ink. We use red ink. Okay, <laughs> so red. red ink. Yeah, it's okay. red. Red ink. Okay, yeah. Yeah. and I like red because it shows up better than pencil. Well, it, it says in the, it's in, in Master General Law says you use Ready. Well, that's how we mark our check-in books yeah. and check-out mm -hmm. books, too. Do you, um, right. do you separate the ballots, like this is a yes, this is a no? No. Or you just go through the pile? Jim was just saying, he witnessed them. He, they go in order of the pile. 
because that's what I thought. I said, this would be really good to just, to look at and then, then you're double checking again as you're right. reading and telling, but we'll go in order of the packet, mm -hmm. so. Do they have to stay in that order? No. I don't know why they wouldn't. I mean, it's just common sense to read it mm -hmm. face down and just keep them, you know? Right. I don't know, I think. Now, we've thought about any, any of the training before this. Yeah, I gotta get some people in. That's if I can In other go. words, this will be handled in, in the training session mm -hmm. that we'll have yeah. for the people who's gonna be doing the work. Okay. Yeah. And the two, the, the, the observers can come, look, and, and come to that. Yeah. So Same maybe thing. what so, we can do is... So we need to set up an observer training session before, uh, yeah, say we can do it four here. or five days before yeah. the county. I'll have to do it whenever, I mean, it's summertime, so. I'll get whoever, I'll just put it out, I'll call people to work and then ask them at the same time if they can come in for training, I'll set up a training date and then I'll. So we could have 20 observers, but you only have 12, I'm thinking. Agents, I, okay, so. Been, I've been standing for an hour and a half early to sit for somebody else who can in and relieve them. I think you can have, I'm trying to think, I got a thing from another town. So we have 12 checkers and tallyers, or readers and tallyers, and then we have a runner. So there's 13. Yeah. Then I have six people counting out the blocks. I would have, if you can get 18 people there to just, w and let me know who they're going to be, same. Yeah, and that way, I, if been standing for yeah, hours, and I think, and, and you hand room, over their tally sheet. Else. Yeah, as long as it's, can you can they switch out their observers? As long as they've signed up with us. Well, we've never had to switch an observer. Right. I, mean, I don't um, think it's well, going to be as bad as you think it is. Count yeah. this one question or, or one person yeah. on the ballot. It goes pretty fast. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it'll, 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 yeah. I think we should be able to finish up within three hours. Yeah, I most. think before three, three hours. hours is a long time. Two hours. Two hours. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're doing scene, well, okay. They, they, can, I mean, they can sit behind the person, no problem. Well, but then they we can't have see. a question about sitting. They have yeah. to stand. They, I think they have to stand. They have to stand. They have to stand. Yeah. I'm pretty that's sure you That's why you could stand. probably. That's why we would like to swap them. I'm getting back during the physical counting, they can stand, but they can sit between yeah. us and yeah. Ingram. Yeah. They can sit in. Check with counsel and get back to them. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just make sure I'll get back to both parties while I need to swap out of service. Please do it in writing. Is the email okay for both of you? Sure. Okay. All right, thanks, okay. Jim. Yeah. Swap out observers. Okay, town council. All right, that's that's easy enough to do. All right, any other suggestions? Input, questions? No. All right, so um, now for me, I will book the gym. I will get the police detail. I will call the all the election workers and um, notify these guys in writing just to have it on record and town council town administrator board of selectmen that there will be a recount at noon on june 20th at the Situate high school gym located at 606 chief justice cushing highway um who else do i have to know eat lunch before you go there. yes <laughs> eat your lunch bring waters <laughs> bring something especially it could be hot we don't know and there's no AC I'll have fans I'll have fans in gym um, and I don't I don't it's everybody Jim you told me it was really easy somebody else said uh, Rich Bowen he said they're not hard you know they're stressful setting up and organizing because I, I for me because I've never done one I want to make sure that we're all doing it right um, procedurally and fairness to both sides and what have you. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, I think so. There'll be a couple of instances where there's that a vote, is that not a vote that could come up? But right. For the most part, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, I don't. What I think, Kathy, if any of the, either side has any further questions, they should be submitted in writing. They'll be shared with the opposition and the answers will be shared with both sides. All right. I need. Um, Gordon, do I have your email? Jennifer, I have yours. GAP. What is it? GAP, I get out the store. Mm -hmm. And then DGM, DGM, and Comcast. <clears throat> so you're going to be my contact, yep. okay? Um, going forward, I think you're right. Let's call them agents, and then the observers are the ones that can come in and just stand outside the ropes or sit outside the ropes and watch, whether mm -hmm. it's general public, um, you know. All right? 
-hmm. So you can have both have agents. And again, mm -hmm. I'll put that in um, a letter to you guys. I'll, it's all drafted up. I just have to put in the dates and stuff. Um, I think it'd be nice to inform the leaders of the Democratic and the Republican Town Committee. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leaders of that. Um, and also that we have a balance of, of each party to be properly represented at the, at the recount. Well, that's us, too. Yeah. That's a board of registrars, too. So and notify uh, town committees. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. And, and two, they, they don't, uh, the, the people that we can choose from is not necessarily the ones that actually work at the polls. It can be other, other people, too, mm -hmm. within the town. If you have someone that want to volunteer and they're a registered Republican voter or Democrat, you mean to work party, the polls either. in the future? Huh? To work the polls in the uh, future? No, no, I'm talking about in, in the in the re recount. I don't, don't think so. I think they have to be appointed election workers to handle ballots. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh I, yeah. I, I wasn't aware of that. The only reason I know that, Conley, is um, years ago I, when I became town clerk. Um, I, we needed tallyers at the end of the night. Mm -hmm. It was a shame to use the people that had been working the polls to sit to stay longer and hand count write-ins that aren't even going to go anywhere for the most part, not declared write-ins. Um, so I got some people together, and um, I mentioned I was at a at a uh, conference, I think it was, and I said they said, "Oh, make sure that they're appointed election workers because you can't they can't handle the ballots if they're not." I said, "Good to know," because I was asking about. It. I said, "Who do you have tally?" And they said, oh, we just use our workers. I said, they, at state elections, they've been there 13 hours. Are you crazy? You know, so I said, this is not fair. So I have volunteers that come in, and it usually doesn't take more than two hours for state election to hand tally. But, um, and they're wonderful because they don't ask to be paid. Um, but they are appointed. In fact, tomorrow night's the appointment of the new list for this year. But, um, and keep in mind that even if they weren't appointed, this year, but had been appointed last year, and the Board of Selectmen haven't appointed the, the new list for the next election year. It carries over until a new appointment. So, all right. Any other questions? What do you think? Good. Right. It's a good learning experience. Oh, oh it, it is. is. A lot of people in the public don't understand about you get three chances to mm -hmm. correct your mistake. Mm -hmm. or yeah, but so once you cast that ballot, once it's in the machine. Yeah, I mean, I had a lot of anxiety over this. I'm not going to lie to you. I felt bad. Um, I called my programmer ballot people layout, and they said, well, we could have done a three-column ballot, but she had a hard time. Some of the names, when she made it two columns and then changed it to three, the names of the addresses were long. So here's, here's your right-hand column, the, the third column. And um, when, she, when she made it a third column, some of these people in this column's names were overlapping the print. So because they were long or something. Um, but moving forward, uh, not on my watch again. This is just, it was dist it's disturbing. I don't like it and you know, it is what it is, but you know. Um, and people need to realize though, if you have a question you can ask, I might not be able to discuss what you're asking legally, but I can certainly say the question's on the ballot. You saw all these people out here campaigning you came here to vote specifically for that, and you asked for help after you cast your ballot. You know, so I called elections with my distress about that whole, I had like three people come up to my table. Um, and they said, it's on the voter. You know, we looked at the ballot, we saw the question. Yeah, the font on the title is a little smaller, but it was there. And it's clear, the language is clear. And the language, the, the other thing too, is people don't like the language. That's the legal language for overrides. It is what it is, and that's not me. So, Kathy, you posted it on the windows of the gym. You did what you could. Oh, I did. I did it. I mean, I, I, people, I and that's. People can miss it all they want. Yeah. I, you shouldn't feel badly. Oh. No, no I, don't, I don't think people should take issue with you. No, I, and you they haven't. What you, could. you put out the email to all the town, you yeah. put the signs on the, on the thing. Um, and in fact, I think I probably alerted you. You problem. did. You uh, that's right. You were the one that told I me, and I was like, told you about it. And, and my and face you was were like, shocked. I, I totally know how how, but I don't want you to think we're yeah, totally responsible. Thank you. For no, no, no. I know. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, but I'm so type A. 
Well, it's good. I'm my you own are. worst enemy. That's the problem. I appreciate that you so. are, Kathy. Thank you. It's I appreciate that. People mm -hmm. are saying that it was done intentionally. Very That's uh, you know I have to stay away from Facebook. Yeah. I have to. I in fact I'm this close to just going on Instagram, <laughs> but it's also knowledgeable for me to get without because I can't participate. But to get hmm, okay. Sense. That's the yeah. this because yeah. now we know moving forward. Yeah. You know. But people also have to educate themselves to the process of, of elections. Sure. Um, it's not stuff we make up from First, hosting those ballots. From you know there's yeah. laws that we have to That's follow right. to set up elections and town meetings as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, it's not an easy task. I've got my elections all starting for next year. There's a lot of them. Mm -hmm. So the space is going to change a lot. <laughs> so, um, so anyhow, so no further questions or comments? No. All right. Thank you. Let's See move you forward. Time. Yes, and if, uh, if I can get everybody together for a training, mm -hmm. I'll email you guys okay. and you can, yeah. you know, um, I don't know if I have to post trainings. I have no idea. I'll figure that Probably out. I post it as a registrar. Yeah, I will. I will. Um, Do we want a motion to put number three? Oh, that's right, too. Let's go back to where we started. All right, a motion to. So we had our discussion. I'll do up new minutes and we'll just. I don't know when we're going to approve them. Oh, we can do it at the training. Yeah, right. Okay. All right, so I'll do up the minutes and then we'll approve those at the next. The training we'll call it a registrar's meeting slash training. <coughs> uh, here it is. Where's my? Here it is. All right. So number three, discuss vote. We did oh, yeah. that, yeah. right? Yeah. Review the oh, duties yeah. of the. Yeah. Uh, so the registrars. Uh, the take. So oh, we did that. We just do the challenge ballots. Okay. And we won't accept the minutes because there aren't any yet. Okay. We already did last minute minutes. So. Uh, I'll give you a motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you, everybody. Yeah.